Welcome to the organic lab here at Wheaton College. Today we're going to look at how we take an infrared spectrum of an organic liquid. IR spectroscopy, or simply IR, is a term that we use for the technique of determining functional groups in a molecule. Functional groups like ethers, alcohols, ketones, aldehydes, carboxylic acids, amines, that sort of thing. And we have at our disposal here a Perkin-Elmer infrared spectrophotometer. This is really a great instrument and it is very easy to take an infrared spectrum of an organic liquid. Now what I say for uh, an organic liquid is going to also obtain in most uh, respects for an organic solid. There are a couple of interesting and uh, uh, important things that we have to do with a solid in order to determine the infrared spectrum of it. But what I say about a liquid is going to largely carry over to that of a solid, okay? So the first thing we have to do is to turn on the instrument. And we do that by means of turning on the uh, computer that's behind the screen here. And we're going to come to this screen first. And we're going to, since this is at Wheaton College, we're going to click on Wheaton College. And we're going to then come to this screen. Now this screen has an icon pretty much in the middle of the screen, and we're gonna click on that. It's gonna say Spectrum. And we click on that, and that should, let's see. There, okay. And we come to this, and it's gonna ask you a couple of questions, and you're going to uh, say, yes, I'm the administrator, okay. And no, I'm not gonna use the active IR assistant, Okay, and then it's going to come to the screen, which is going to uh, record our infrared spectrum. Now, over in this window here, it will say ready. You cannot take an infrared spectrum if it doesn't say ready. All right. Okay, here's our screen, and there's some icons here at the top, which we're going to use for uh, giving us a, an infrared spectrum. The first one that we have to... Uh, take is a scan of what we call the background. Now, we have this disk over here, uh, and it's got in the middle of it a little bit of diamond material in it, and we have to take the background of it, which will be subtracted then from all of the infrared spectra that we take. So, we go to scan, like that, we come to this particular window, and then over here in the upper right, we have an icon that it looks like, uh, to me it always looks like an eye with an eyebrow. And uh, if you uh, land on it, it says background. So we're gonna click that, we're gonna come to this particular window, and then hit scan. Now, it's gonna take four pulses of the infrared uh, spectro spectrometer. You can see what the background looks like. Here, it's quite, uh, quite intense, actually. And you're gonna go through four scans. Don't do anything, let it uh, proceed through four scans. And then it's going to uh, come to this particular window. And now we're going to apply the benzaldehyde. I chose benzaldehyde because it is interesting. It has a benzene ring, it has an aldehyde, uh, carbon-oxygen double bond and it has some other interesting features about it. And I'm gonna take my, my uh, pipette here, I'm gonna put just one drop right on that diamond in the center. Okay, so now we have the background. And I've typed in here already benzaldehyde, and that's going to identify the infrared spectrum that we get from this when we put it out. So once again, we're going to uh, pulse this, but now instead of taking background, we're going to do start. So uh, it says warning duplicate file name. Yes, that's fine with me. And then scan. Just like with the background, it's going to uh, have four pulses and you'll see them accumulating here. And you can see right here the spectrum now of benzaldehyde. And it 
usually takes, oh, at most a minute. All right. It says to overwrite. Yeah, we're going to overwrite this. That's fine. And so there's a spectrum of benzaldehyde. Didn't take too long, did it? And now we're going to uh, prepare it for printing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to expand the x-axis so that it goes from, uh, from uh, left to right in the extreme. And we do this with opt view. And there you go. You can see that. Not only does it expand in this direction, but also in the y direction as well. All right, so now we want to know where these peaks are. It's important to know where they are. And so we're going to then uh, click the peaks. And you can see that we have this set for a threshold where even small peaks like this one here at 3,064 wave numbers is going to have, uh, have a number. Uh, associated with it. And so all of the important peaks now have numbers associated with them, and we can use this to identify benzaldehyde. All right, so what do we want to do? Well, we want to preserve this, right? So we're going to now print it. Bring this uh, cursor over to the print icon, and you can tell that it's going to be printing because the ready data button will be blinking on and off. And in a few seconds, we should have the benzaldehyde infrared spectrum recorded for us. And you, you can use this. You can put this in your notebook. Uh, you can append this to your laboratory report, if you so wish. And here it comes. Okay, and You can see the the uh, spectrum here of benzaldehyde relative to what you saw on the screen. Okay, now we, we're not finished, of course. We have to clean off the disk, and we have some Kim wipes here and some acetone in a squirt bottle, and what we're going to do is to clean off the, uh, the paten. Now, if you're next in line to take an infrared spectrum and the person before you has cleaned off or should have cleaned off the disk here, make sure that the acetone evaporates because if you don't, you're going to get a partially the spectrum of acetone and you don't want that, obviously. So make sure that that's clean. Now, we're very fortunate to have a computer that gets us onto the internet and there is a program which I encourage the students to use. It is simply called SDBS, and we can actually uh, get this program through uh, Google. Okay. Just type SDBS in there. SDBS, enter, and okay. This, uh, <clears throat> this typing SDBS brings us directly to this particular window. And you can see uh, it has all different types of criteria for uh, looking up the spectra of your compound. There are all kinds of spectra that you can uh, obtain here, uh, like the mass spectrum, the C13 NMR, the proton NMR, electron spin resonance, Raman spectro spectroscopy, IR spectroscopy. All these are available for many of the compounds in this database. But all we need to put here for now is the name of the compound, and it's benzaldehyde. So let's go type in B-E-N-Z-A-L-D-E-H-Y-D-E, -E -E, enter. Okay, and then here we have a, uh, a whole list of compounds, one of which is benzaldehyde. There are others that are related to it. But here's benzaldehyde right on top. And wherever you see a Y, that means that there is that type of spectrum available. So for benzaldehyde, we have a mass spectrum, a C13 NMR, a proton NMR, an infrared spectrum, a Raman spectrum, and an ESR, or electron spin resonance spectrum. And so we're just going to click on 
IR, and here we have the infrared spectrum. Now, there are two types of infrared spectra that are available to us. In this case, we have what's called a carbon tetrachloride solution. We don't want that one. We want the one above it, the liquid film. So we click on that, and this is what we're going to compare our infrared spectrum that we just took with the published spectrum, which we have right here. And you can check and see that just about every peak, even little tiny ones, are represented on this particular published spectrum that gives us uh, assuredness that that, in fact, is the infrared spectrum of benzaldehyde that we just took on our infrared spectrometer. Okay. Now, there are a couple of things that you should note about this. The, let's say this peak at 1703, it says four. Now, what does that mean? Well, I have a very large peak at 1698.84. Okay. That is a 1703 peak. Well, you say the two numbers aren't the same. It is true that all uh, infrared spectra on whatever instrument you take are going to be off by maybe one, two, three, five wave numbers. That's unfortunate, but it's okay because it tells us that this is the most intense peak. How do I know that? Well, if you go over to the transmittance on the y-axis, you can see that it's all the way down to about, oh, between 0 and 10 here. So that's about 4. So that's what the 4 means. It's the percent transmittance. And that, of course, is very uh, much uh, identifying that this is that particular peak. It's off by a little bit, but that's OK. We've identified it. And everything else is represented uh, from this spectrum on what we've just taken. So we say we have benzaldehyde. 